Yes, I did it. I can finally show you inside my new camper van. So I bought this people mover van. It was an eight seater and took out some seats and made some cool stuff and converted it into a camper van all by myself. I cannot wait to finally show you everything that I did. So first I'm gonna run this quick time lapse showing you how I put all the pieces together and then we'll go through the details of how I actually made it. I always wanted to have a camper van and drive around Australia, but I always put it off as one of those when I'm older things for when I'm done backpacking. But because of Corona, I'm back here in my home state of WA, so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to be able to get out and see my own backyard. I researched so many different types of vans, and it was actually my old mechanic who suggested a Toyota Tarago. And when I first saw them, I thought that is a daggy mum soccer mum van. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized how reliable they are and how much space there is to be able to convert it into a camper van, but also have some seats for when I managed to find some friends. <laughs> Toyotas are actually super reliable, which was a really big thing for me because I don't want to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere when I'm potentially camping alone. This car is 18 years old, so it's pretty old. Not quite as old as me though, but it's not done too many Ks considering how old it is. And I've been told that these cars will run for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Ks. So let's cross my fingers and hope that I got a bargain. It was very cheap, $5,900, which gave me money to spend on getting the windows tinted, which I love, and obviously getting the stuff to deck out the conversion. Pull that out and then this will pop open. And then now I've got to get this to there and undo that. Okay, so I've encountered my first little problem two minutes into the job is that the bolts have been there for about 18 years and are really really stuck on there so I don't think this one is gonna do it I need to get one that's like a six point you know those circle ones that go on I'm just going to Bunnings to try and find a wrench so that I can get that bolt off a lot easier Woo. Bunnings! I've never had a wrench like this. I was trying to use a spanner and it was just so hard. This is sick! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Woohoohoo! I've already loosened it and you can see it's really light. It looks as though there's a cable I've got to take off first that's attached. Um, just a little wire cable, not electrical. It's a mechanical one for moving the seat forward and back. What happens when I do this? Woo! Oh, there we go, that was easy. do it and now look at all this room that is a heap of room Woo. this is where the seats attached to so I've just set it up around that in here is also going to be where you'll actually store the mattress when you want to use it as a table instead of a bed now this is going to be the moment of truth will the top fit on the frame that I made I really hope so it fits! Yes! Once I put in the extra support, it's going to be tough as nails. Tough as a box. Woo! Now, I didn't film the whole process because I wanted to concentrate on what I was doing because I was designing it as I went. So now I'm just doing the finishing touches. Yeah! The hardest part for me has been having really weak wrists since I broke them both. Being able to like hold shit and pull things and I just had to put a couple of extra reinforcements in here to make sure it's gonna hold the weight of the bed. Woohoo! I think I 
finished. Okay, so the lid of the box, which is the top of the bed, fits perfectly. But I'm just gonna grab my electric sander and sand <clears throat> a little bit along this bottom edge so it just closes that little bit smoother once the hinges are on there. I'm going to just cut an extra little support beam for inside to stop the timber from bowing a bit even though I bought the premium plywood it still doesn't stay exactly perfectly square so I'm just going to cut a tiny beam off some off cuts from my house renovations and don't judge my, you know, don't judge my tool style I'm sure my tradie mates will laugh at the way I'm doing things tell me I'm doing everything wrong probably really unsafe actually maybe I'll tie my hair up but uh yeah it's fun. And that is 600 mil. Yes. Okay, I'm almost ready for the final installation. I've uh, put some lino in. It looks a bit lumpy, but it's actually not. It's just because it's not glued to the floor. But I've just put this in just so it's easier to sweep out and keep clean when you're camping. I hate when you get all sand in the car and then you're going to sleep in the car. So here means I can keep it clean and protect my carpets. These here is where the chairs attach to. Now, if you're doing a permanent van conversion, obviously take it out. To take them out though, you have to take out these seats and take out the whole railing. Um, I wanted to keep some passenger seats in my car so I'm keeping these seats in permanently and I've just taken the middle ones out and I've just made some little cardboard cases just so that grease and stuff doesn't get on the bedding. This is the supports that I made on the bed box slash table by day but these are important for when it becomes a bed because it comes out like this and these three here are supporting the bed. And then these ones are where the timber sits on top of. So that was very important to ensure that it's stable. And then you just pull it out and it slots in on those supports and slots in here against the chair and then the mattress goes on top. So now I'm making some insulation from the window. I've just got these cheap uh, window shield thingies from Kmart for $5 each. And I'm just cutting them all to size and using gaffer tape to make some like neat edging on where I've made the cuts. Just because I'm a perfectionist, you probably don't need to do that. Um, yeah, and then they just go in there. I've popped some suction caps in through. I might have to get a couple more. But yeah, pretty easy way to keep it not too boiling hot inside the van when you're in the sun. Please, can you help me? Can you help me? I need your help in the comments. I've been trying to think of a name for my van. You know how people give their vans or their cars a cute name? I just can't decide. I was thinking like, because it's gold, something referring to the color might be cute, like Goldie or Sunny or Golden Ray, or maybe a T word because it's a Tarago, a Toyota, Terry the Tarago, I don't know. Tell me your ideas, please, and hopefully you can help me choose one. I've got this swag mattress. It's quite thin, but it's really firm, so it should be quite comfy. The only problem was it's about a foot too long for the space. So I've just taken the cover off, which is here, and I'm gonna cut about 30 centimeters off and I'm gonna cut the same amount off the foam and hopefully I'll put it all in and it'll fit. Trying to remember where all the bits go. Woohoo! And that is the hardest part of sewing: is getting the thread in the needle. Normally, you'd do this at a table. I actually don't have a dining table.
Let me know if you want to have a closer look at some of these features and I'll make an actual van tour to show you specific things that I built into the design and how it all works in everyday life. I did make a few tweaks along the way and I just absolutely love my van now and I've already done a few trips which that'll be my next upcoming videos but let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to know about making the van conversion and I'll do a special video just on that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.